So let's start off by talking about what is iOS. So iOS wasn't always called iOS. In fact, it was originally developed for the iPhone, and the iPhone, of course, was released back in 2007. It seems kind of hard to believe it's been that that long ago that the mobile world really, really did change. And and the thing about the iPhone is, before the iPhone, there were touchscreen phones, but the iPhone really changed it to use your finger to do everything. And I think that was a huge change, and also just the simplicity of of how things worked. The idea of the App Store came along a little bit later. So in uh, on March 6, 2008 a beta released allowing third-party apps and that was not something that uh, that Apple had launched with in fact Steve Jobs said well you can create web apps that will will basically give you functionality or applications on the iPhone but they later changed that and it's a good thing they did otherwise you wouldn't be taking this course so once they allowed that SDK then this whole notion of the App Store and it came into being and that really is you can see that that revolutionized again the, the mobile computing platform because now it was just you can just touch a couple of button swipes and then you're right there and you have your app you don't have to worry about installs you don't have to worry about trying to find apps it's all there in one place in uh, in 2010 the iPhone OS was was changed to be called iOS and that really had to do with the the fact that they were using it on more than the iPhone it was on the iPod touch it was on the iPad so a little bit more about iOS uh, right now, as as I'm speaking, iOS is at version 4.33. I just watched the developer conference where iOS 5.0 was announced, and it's supposed to come out uh, fall 2011, and it has some some nice new features. Something that was lacking from Android, I think, did a little bit better on the notifications, and they're adding that into the platform, and they're also adding some wireless sync, which is, is really going to be nice. And we talked about this before, it runs on the iPhone, the iPod Touch, the iPad, and the second generation of the Apple TV. And we haven't seen much with the Apple TV yet, but I think in the future we, we are going to. AT&T and Verizon only in the U.S. In fact, just today they announced that you can buy an undocked or an unlocked iPhone, but it's, it's pretty pretty cost prohibitive. The official resellers for the iPhone in the U.S. are AT&T and Verizon. So iOS, some of the features, it's it's the one button OS. You can see here on, on the screen I've got a, a picture of an iPhone and you can see there's only one hardware button. Now it's a little deceiving because all the other buttons that are within the UI, but it is distinctive in, in the fact that really the main operation of the OS happens with one hardware button. You've got a home screen here and you can see the apps that are the icons that are apps on the home screen. There are several pages of, of screens and then if you scroll all the way to the left, swipe all the way to the left, you'd get to a spotlight search where you could search the, the iPhone. You can use folders to group apps together. So this was a new feature released in iOS 4. iOS 5 is going to include the notifications like Android so you're going to have a drop down that you can drag from the top of the screen and see notifications. Right now the notification system in an iPhone is, is a little modal dialog that pops up. Multitasking support was added since iOS 4, which you you this is something that's interesting to you as a developer because there's a lot of rules that are based around this multitasking. So if you want to do a multitasking app, you're gonna to need to understand how this works. And you know, something unique about iOS it's it's not a general purpose OS. It's not something that you could just install on hardware that a hardware vendor could just say, I'm going to make an iOS phone, at least currently not. Apple tightly controls the hardware, which is a good thing and a bad thing. And as a developer, you'll you'll see why why it is actually kind of good for you because of the of the less options. And there's a lot more stuff with iOS. I think you know it'd be it'd be really hard to describe all of the features of iOS in, in this short presentation. But you can look that up on on Apple's website. 